All right, so the next thing that we're gonna talk about is energy levels and orbitals. And I'm gonna tell you, uh, in essence, we're gonna be getting into something that's a little bit confusing. It kind of may take a little bit of time, the development, kind of putting everything together. Kind of bear with me on this. Uh, it, it can get a little confusing, but just know that as we build, and we're gonna, it's, you can almost think of it as an inverted pyramid where you get your, your central area with the nucleus and you continue to build up and up and up. Once we get to that level, that once we build up, then I think things will kind of become as clear as, as mud. So, energy levels and orbitals. What we need to recognize is we have locations around, whoops, again, the wrong button here. Quit that. Um, we have locations around the nucleus. Your nucleus is in the center. And around that, we have regions. We're going to see that once there's a certain amount of electrons in an area close to the nucleus, it's full. So no more electrons can go into this area. And then the next electron would have to go into the next level. Okay. Think of it as a parking, um, a parking uh, lot where people didn't have their own spots or they didn't randomly fill them but rather in this first row of our park parking lot you know cars would have to pull in and park in order in order in order in order and then once that row was done then cars would pull in again into the next one all right and that's kind of how electrons do work they 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 fill in closest to the nucleus and then once they fill a certain level they move to the next now the energy level are those locations around the nucleus so we would call this the n equals one the first one the second one would be the n equals two the third n equals three and so on and so forth again as you get further and bigger and bigger or in other words further away from the nucleus your energy level number goes up okay so that's energy levels now what's cool about energy levels in terms of orbitals and we're gonna see what all orbitals are and again like I say it'll I think it'll clean up as we go through but basically the number of orbitals is equal to the energy level it's in so again let's hear that the number of orbitals is equal to the energy level it's in so let's say we say energy level n equals one number of orbitals in it there'd be one one orbital in the first energy level in the energy level two there would be two orbitals energy level three three orbitals and so on and so forth so again the number of orbitals is equal to the energy level it's in so let's go right ahead and start to fill out a little chart and I'm gonna move this chart forward here I won't fill it all out completely but basically here we go so I've got my energy level notice n equals one two three four that's my energy level okay now the number of orbitals or sub level I mean I guess what you're gonna see is I'm gonna actually name these and I and I'll, you'll see how we have number of orbitals name of orbitals and total number of orbitals and I'll clean that up as I go through but basically the number of orbitals is the same as the energy level so we have one we would have two we would have three and we would have four alright so the number of orbitals is the same as the energy level now the name of those orbitals well what's the simplest orbital I don't know why my lights went off I'm moving around quite a bit. Um, the, the simplest orbital was the S, okay, the spherical one. And so the only orbital that's going to be in that first energy level will be the S, okay. In the second energy level, the, there are two orbitals. We have an S and a P. And you can see, again, I'm going back to the S because the only difference between the S in the first energy level and the S in the second energy level is the size. 
okay if you think about it if you and you know the the previous little screen where I had my nucleus and I had my ends going around n equals 1 n equals 2 notice they're both spheres one's just bigger the n equals 2 is bigger and that's exactly what happens but we still have the simplest orbital in that second energy level being the s in the third we'd have the s the p and the d so notice our first appearance of the d orbital there is no d in the n equals 2 or n equals 1 because there's only two in the fourth we have the s p d and f so there's four all right now and you'll see where you know if you're thinking energy level five six whatever you'll see what that all means in a second now again there is no difference between the s in the first and the s in the second in terms of what they look like there is no difference in the p in the second and p in the third remember there is no p in the first because there is no p's at all in the first orbital but um, there is a difference here how do you differentiate if the size is different so the way that we differentiate between the s in the first and the s in the second or third or fourth for that matter is by placing a one in front of the first one because it's in the energy level n equals one and it's the first s we call it the one s we would call the two s of uh, the s in the second energy level the two s so two s of course this would be three s and this one down here would be the 4s okay now the p in the second energy level it is the 2p again notice why 2 the reason it's 2 is because it's in the second energy level there is no 1p please note and I'm gonna erase this but please note no 1p there's no 1d just like there's no 2d you'll see that because the p only has because the second energy level only has two it's the s and the p all right so please note there's there's no one p here and whatnot there's only the one s this would be the three p because notice our two p p versus our three p four p in the d three d and four d and notice the f four f so again the only difference between, and again, if I were to draw the orbital, and that's not, that I'm not filling in the chart right now, but here's the 1s, okay? The only difference with the 2s would be, it would be bigger. We know size doesn't matter, so obviously 1s, small sphere, 2s, larger sphere. But again, still spherical. Same thing with the p's, there are, three etc okay so that's the name of the orbitals I want to go to the total orbitals and then I'll kind of stop with this this, this little uh, pattern I'm going on but let's look at the total number of orbitals s how many different arrangements did we have for the s we had only the sphere there was no way we could rearrange it right if we rotated it on the axes it'd still be that sphere so there's only the one way so the total number of orbitals is one okay i'm going to use red i think i think red will show up okay yeah let me use a different color how about we go to uh, green okay so one tight now in the two s notice the emphasis in the two s how many are different arrangements could we have in the two s only one because it's an s it's a bigger S, but we still, if we rotate on the axis, there's only one. So only one. How many arrangements were there in the two, again, the emphasis is two, P? Well, because it's a P, there are three. Remember the S, P, D, F, there was one, three, five, seven. So obviously there's three. Notice the total number of orbitals, what I'm talking about here is when I say four. There's one in the S and three in the P, okay? Three S, one, because it's an S. Three P, three, because it's a P, not because it's a three, but it just so happens. Three D would have five. 
So 5 plus 3 plus 1 is 9. Okay. In the 4, S. Emphasis would only be 1 because it's an S. P for P. I don't care that it's a 4P versus a 2P. It's still a P and a P only has 3, just bigger size. So we'd have bigger bulbs. 4D is 5 and 4F is 7. Again, because of the F, D, P, S. We're not really worried about the number in front. So 1, 3, 5, 7, you add those all up and you get 16, right? 4 plus 5 is 9 plus 7 more is 16. So those are our total number of orbitals. This is, the, this is a great little chart to kind of organizing. And again, you might be saying, well, what does this all mean? Well, it, it has something to do with where the electrons are located, how they're going to be able to bond, how they're going to be able to form ions or ionic uh, bonds with other substances, et cetera, et cetera. So here's our beginning of it. The next little section is going to be de dealing with uh, greater detail.